This video is sponsored by Mammoth Interactive. Take your skills to the next level at mammothinteractive.com. Check the links down below for some amazing deals. Hey everybody, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add in different kinds of projectiles uh, to your uh, first-person shooter here. Now, of course, this is the, within the first-person shooter template here. And in order to get started here, what we need to do is go to the first-person blueprints and go to the first-person character here. Okay, And this is where a lot of our stuff is going to be uh, working out here. So the one thing that we need to start off here... Uh, is we need to, uh, you can see here that we have the uh, sp uh, spawn first uh, person projectile here, right? And you can see here that we have this uh, f uh, spawn actor first person uh, projectile, all right? And in order to make uh, this work here, um, we need to do a couple of things. Now, first things first is we need to add in a different place uh, so that we can put this uh, spawn first person projectile here. So in the functions, we're going to add in a function here. And I'm mostly doing this just to make sure that we have a good and clean code that makes a lot of sense. All right. Now, of course, we could do this in the event graph, uh, that screen you just saw, but it would become messy. And one thing that I highly recommend that you do is make your code as clean and as easy to read as possible because it does make your game harder to release if it's not, all right? So what we're going to say, we're going to say shoot projectile, okay? That's all we're going to say in here. And if you look at this here, there's a couple things that we have to do. Uh, you can see that we need to add in a transform here and uh, in order to make this work here. So in order, uh, so if we go back to shoot projectile, uh, and we click on that here, and let's just compile this for a quick second here. And the inputs here, we're going to add in, um, we'll call this uh, transform. And this is, of course, going to be of type transform. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's compile that in here. Okay, hop back to the event graph here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in shoot projectile. Okay, and so you can see here we have that shoot projectile here. And uh, you can also see that we have, um, uh, this is from the VR. Um, I think it's from the VR. Yes, uh, it's from the VR uh, section. So, so you can hook that up there. For this purpose, since I'm on a desktop, it doesn't really matter here, OK? Um, but what we can do is uh, we can actually just, uh, just hook this up like this here. Now, what you also need to do is hook up the transform here, OK? And so that's essentially uh, what we're doing right here. So as you can see, um, instead of spawning this first-person projectile here, we are going to be spawning it within this shoot projectile here. So what we can do is we can cut that by pushing Control x and we can paste it right in here. So literally, we're going to be doing the exact same thing here. So once this uh, works here, you can see that it will literally spawn the projectile. So let's quickly go test this here. And sure enough, everything does work. Now, let's just take a quick look at this here. So what we've done here is that we have the shoot projectile, which is a custom function. And after this function is completed, we play the sound here because the sound isn't at the, um, uh, the sound is not going to change. All we're really looking to do is just change the projectile here. So um, if you wanted to have custom sounds, you would probably have to do that within the spawn projectile here, uh, or shoot projectile here. But that's not what we're trying to do. Next thing we need to do is let's hop back to the editor here and let's um, let's rename this first person projectile and we'll call this yellow. Okay, and then we will right click and duplicate, and um, instead of this yellow here, um, and that was kind of weird what happened here, but let's uh, let's uh, click this here and we're going to call this um, you know let's make it the opposite on the color wheel, so let's make it purple. Okay, so let's hop into here. So we will take a look at the first person projectile here. And if we go to the viewport, we can click on this here. And it looks like we have a first person projectile material. So let's hop back into content here. We'll just type in projectile. And we need to find the first person projectile material. Okay, so let's double click into this here. And actually, we don't need to double click into this yet. Uh, let's duplicate this. Let's see. 
we'll go to show in folder view. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to duplicate this and uh, we're going to call this material purple. Okay. And if we want to be just uh, a little bit do, doing our due diligence, let's make sure this is yellow and this is purple. Okay. So uh, first person projectile. Yeah, that's yellow. And this is going to be purple. And all we're going to do is change it to, well, purple. Okay. Push OK. Save. And then hop back into the first person projectile here. And we're going to type in purple. And there you go. All right, so now we have uh, basically have a uh, purple one here, and I think that's looking pretty good. It looks like it has a yellow um, uh, thing around it, but that's okay. So let's hop into the projectile here, and let's make this one a little bit different. So let's make this one maybe like 20, uh, well, maybe not 20,000, but 10,000 and 10,000. And all that's going to do is that's going to make this projectile um, go faster here. All right, compile that. And okay, I think that's all we need for this for now. And if we really want to, we could hop into the shoot pro projectile here and we can type in purple. Okay. And we can check that out here. So it should be the exact same, except you can see that it's a lot like, look at that. That's now that's a projectile, <laughs> right? Anyway, let's hop back that um, yellow. And so you can see how by just pushing yellow or purple, it makes them very easy to, to work here, okay? So this is kind of um, you know the first few steps of this here. Uh, what we need to do is we need to uh, add in uh, another uh, type of variable here. And for this next step, there's many ways that you can do this depending on the complexity of your game. I'm gonna go with the easiest possible way to do this particular task here. But just remember, as your game gets more complex, your the way you structure your data in your games is going to change. So what we're going to do is um, we're just going to add in uh, another variable here. And then we're going to call this variable um, weapon. Um, weapon choice. OK? Choice like that. And we're going to make this of type, um, there's, a, there's a couple things that we can do. So in a lot of games that I've made, what I would do is number the, the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, uh, and kind of just remember what it is. But in the, it's better to maybe use a string. So that way we can name what everything is. All right, so let's go ahead and push compile that here. And then the weapon choice, the default value is going to be yellow, OK? And you can see here that if the default value is indeed yellow, uh, then it will spawn the yellow projectile. Okay, so in order to do this here, let's um, let's what we need to do is compare the string to um, uh, we need to compare the string to make sure that it is indeed yellow. So this is actually pretty easy to do. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add in a branch. And this will say we need a condition to see if it's true or false. So there's actually a lot of cool things that we can do here. So we can say uh, the true here uh, is going to be yellow. So how do we check to see if this condition is yellow? Well, let's control drag that out there. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag this out and type in equals twice. OK, so if weapons choice is double equal to and I'm going to say yellow. OK, and this is case sensitive, by the way. So if you. If you capitalize it, you make sure if it's capitalized. So if it's equal to yellow, then we're going to spawn the first person projectile. OK, so that looks pretty good here. Um, and what we also need to do is we can add in another branch here. Right. And uh, what we need to do is um, not necessarily a branch here. So let's just hook that up for a quick second. And the way what we're going to do this here is we're going to say if this condition is true, then we're going to spawn this first person projectile here. If it's false, we're going to add in another branch here. And basically, this is almost the exact same thing. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to copy this here, this equals here, go into weapons choice, and this type we're going to type in purple. Okay. So now that we have uh, purple, then we need to, uh, and I'm just going to literally copy and paste this here, and then I'm going to drag out the true here. Okay, and you can see that if it's um, 
yellow, um, it will go here. If it's purple, it will go, we have to actually type in purple here. All right. And so if we go to weapons choice and type in purple, all right, and then you can see there's a little bit of an issue here. And of course, good thing we compiled that. Uh, you have to drag out the spawn transform there too. So we can close those compiler results just like that. And let's quickly test that out. All right, sure enough, it does indeed work. So let's hop back in here. And then lastly, what we can do is we can actually drag this false back up to here. Now, what this is going to do is let's say you made a mistake here, or let's say your default projectile is the yellow, right? And you type in some random other thing. Okay, if we if we do that here and we play it, you know, it just goes, it just defaults back to yellow. Now that last step is optional. Um, and you can see how that works here. So the default is yellow. And if it's not yellow, it goes to purple. But if it's something that the computer doesn't understand, then, um, you know, then it does, uh, then it goes back to yellow. If we don't do that, nothing happens, right? So that's an error. Uh, and you want to add in little pieces of uh, information like this just, just so that your game doesn't completely break. Because if you don't have a projectile in a shooter game, it's not going to work. So you at least have this uh, where it goes back to the regular uh, one just like that. Okay, so we're almost uh, done this here. Now what we can do is we can actually go to the event graph here. And uh, I don't think there is a begin play, but nevertheless, let's add in some old school kind of Doom style uh, controls here uh, instead of a toggle here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in keyboard one, and then I'm gonna type in keyboard two. And all this is gonna do is that this is going to um, change the keyboard one to uh, when you press one and keyboard two when you press two. So when you press one, we are going to drag this over and set the weapon choice, okay? And so we're just gonna set it to yellow, okay? And then on two, we can literally just uh, drag this down here, copy and paste that. And we're gonna type in purple, okay? So all that does is this is we're gonna set that to purple, all right? So uh, good, good enough here, but let's make this back to yellow. Okay, and what should happen is if we play this, right, if we push two, we can switch weapons. So we have, you know, the other thing that you can do with this particular uh, type of setup here is like, you know, this kind of looks more like a grenade launcher uh, than, than anything else, right? And then this one is more of a, uh, it's just obviously it's more of like a projectile, kind of like an, uh, this would look more like an arrow if it was long and not a ball. So you get the idea. Um, so grenade launcher, this might do more damage. This one's faster, but maybe do a little bit less damage. Now this isn't a hit scan. Uh, and a hit scan is just like an actual bullet. Like if you click it automatically goes there. That is a story for a different time because uh, a hit scan takes quite a bit more work to do. But nevertheless, uh, you can see here that you can change in between both of these here. And I, uh, you have these two uh, items there, all right? So that's basically it. I hope you really enjoyed this. I certainly did. And that is the way that you can switch weapons. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. If you really like this video, you can buy our content down below. It really does help us out when you buy our content down below because this channel doesn't do a Patreon. Instead, we sell our digital products down below. If you really like this channel, you could subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We release 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month, every single month. We release everything from Adobe tutorials to 3D modeling tutorials, to game development tutorials, to machine learning tutorials, to web development tutorials, and more. We're constantly pushing the bounds in e-learning, and if we can get to 10,000 paid subscribers per month, we can become the best e-learning company on the planet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.